Do you have moody teenagers? Do you have cranky teenagers? In this video, we're gonna talk about why teenagers are sometimes so difficult and what we can do to navigate those difficult teen years. All right, but before we get into it, I do have to have a big disclaimer. So this stuff is just for the normal average stuff that teens go through. I am not a psychologist, I am not a doctor, but I am a mother and a mother of eight children, five boys, three girls. Being a teenager brings so many different experiences. Number one, their bodies are changing. They're gonna go through puberty and all of that. They have a lot of things going on with their brains that are changing because of the hormones that are being created because of puberty. They're also dealing with so many stresses of friendships, getting into harder subjects in school, of trying to fit in. There's so many things like moving parts to being a teenager. When they go through puberty, their brain starts seeking out emotionally charged experiences. And so they are highly susceptible to risk taking. They all think they're immortal. They, they, they think they can do whatever they want and nothing will happen. Their frontal lobe right here is a, is a part of the brain that really is about rational thinking it's about, it's kind of like your brakes, like, okay, let's just slow down here, right? That part of the brain is not fully grown in and it doesn't grow in until around their mid twenties. So when teenagers are a teenager, the amygdala, the ancient brain, which is the emotional brain is the one that trumps all parts of the brain. And so that's why they're very emotional. That's why they're very high strung. They are just out there somewhere in irrational land. Now in this time of teenage years, and we all know this because we felt it as teenagers, they all have a desire to be liked, to be accepted, to be part of the tribe, right? And not to stand out. And they also seek to be independent from their family. I remember feeling this at the end of high school with that desire of like, I just want to go out and be my own person live my own life. The 13, 14, 15 year olds, I think are really the part where there's just so much friction going on with their little minds and their bodies and their emotions. I tell you, it's like clockwork. When my child turns 13, there is something that happens. And now I know it's their brain. And I say, oh no, here comes another 13 year old. Ugh. Another thing that I learned is that their sensitivities are so heightened during this time. This heightened emotional awareness with teens is like their superpower. They can read us so much better than we can read ourselves or we can read them. That's what scientists have said, that these teenagers have the superpower to be able to um, have a sense of how people are feeling a lot better than adults or children. So the amygdala, the emotional brain that is the boss of a teenager's brain, that is also part of the brain that keeps us safe it's super sensitive to danger. So when a teenager is very emotional, they can become more anxious than adults and children. Since teens rely so heavily on the emotional brain, they sometimes can get these sensitivities wrong. You've had that experience, right? With your teenager, like asking them to empty a dishwasher and they just blow up at you. And you're thinking, okay, now what just happened there? You were fine just a minute ago, but now you're in a tirade. They think that you're being judgmental and critical when in fact you are not. And so you just have to be aware of that and be sensitive to their sensitivities, if that makes any sense. This is so cool. So this hormone that is released in our brains, when it's released in the brains of children and adults, that hormone is meant to calm you down. That same hormone in a teenager does the exact opposite. It makes them more anxious. It makes them more stressed. So when a teen starts to feel a little bit of stress, you know, to us, it's not, not a big deal. Things that we don't think are very stressful to them, they are much more stressful than they are to us. There is good news though, because just like a storm, you know, it's raging. The storm eventually ends, right? And they are able to have their brains grow in and their frontal lobe will become more prominent and it will finally become the boss. So they will be able to be more rational. They finally become thoughtful and responsible people. Whew. 
glad that storm is over. All right, now I have given you some scientific reasons for our teenagers and how and why they act the way they do. I have five strategies that we as parents can use during this teenage time. I have parented my last four children a lot different from my first four children. And I think I'm a better second time around. That's what we have to do as parents. Don't take yourself too seriously as a parent. That is what I did. I took myself way too serious as a parent and I caused so many problems. My children can attest to that. Sorry children, love ya. All right, the second strategy is kind of goes along with the first one. So many times in my homeschool with my kids, math was the enemy. I don't know if that is in your house, but it is in my house. And they would get just so frustrated day after day. And I remember so many times that they would just start to cry because it was so frustrating to them. At first I would get so worried and like, oh my word. And then I would get upset at them and say, hey, stop doing this, stop crying. And you know, it just was a disaster. Well, I finally learned that it's okay that these storms and these frustrations and these tears show up. Remember, they're sensitive to emotional feelings. And so they feel them so much stronger than we do. And so what I would do is I would sit there with them. Then I'd go get them tissue and I would just sit there not say anything. And I would rub their back and I would say things like, you know, math stinks sometimes. I would just say those kinds of things, nothing else. The best help you can do is just to be a listener and to let them talk it out. Back off, you know, let the storm pass a little bit, let them have some space, let them go into their room wherever they want to go and just settle down. Most parents want to help their kids when they're feeling down, but most of the time teens just want to figure it out themselves. And if you're always stepping in and you're always saying, we need to do this and I want to be right here, they're not gonna learn how to do that. And it really irritates them as teens because they are, again, remember, they want to be independent. The third strategy I wanna go over is the tone of our home really is about mom and dad and how they regulate their emotions. Be the example of being calm in the situation. I know it's hard, it's very, very hard. Our kids are so good at pushing our buttons. I had eight children that know how to push every single one of my buttons. It is something that we must learn to do. We're adults. Our prefrontal cortex is grown in, so use it. The next strategy is eat healthy to boost their mood. Food really affects our brains. Your brain and your gut go together. And the things that you eat really determine your brain function and how you are and your attitude and how you feel, it all goes together. And sometimes we don't think that it does, especially teens. Maybe you can give them a little bit of education on healthy eating, but mostly since you're not really gonna be able to control what they eat when they're teens, just when you are at home and you are cooking for them, try and have it be somewhat healthy. And that way they can get some type of healthy eating into their bodies when they're at home with you. All right, the fifth strategy that parents need to gravitate to with their teens, is I had an experience with one of my daughters. She came in and she was just so upset about something and then the tears started to flow. And as she talked, I didn't really say much. You know, I was just with her. She would just talk and talk and talk and after an hour of all of this, and then it was just like all of a sudden she said some things, oh, I just figured out my problem. Her mood changed like that, again, like a teen, and she got up, left the room, and I thought, all right, well, I didn't have to do much other than just be there, be present, and to listen, and sometimes that's all our teens want from us. Be present with your teens. So this means being present when they're in a good mood and present when they're not in a good mood. Now, what does that look like? When they are in a good mood, you know, make sure that you are looking them in the eyes, you know, eye contact. When they come home from someplace, ask them how it went. Now, when it's the bad, crazy, stormy times, still be present with them. You are their support and their anchor in this storm. In their psyche, in their brains, they need our attention. They need us to be present with them in the good and the bad. And in this chaotic process that we're watching, isn't it wonderful that you get to be on the front row? Don't ever take that for granted. 
You go through all the teenage turmoil and then they become amazing people. You know what happens? They leave. They leave you. That's what happens. Finally, they're the type of people you want to be around. <laughs> and then they leave you. What a dichotomy parenting is. We'll see you in another video. Toodles.